Good morning, and thank you for joining us today for Metavolve's formal introduction to our new Chief Executive Officer, David Preiner. I'm Aaron Otten, Cor Corporate Secretary of Metavolve, and we're excited to kick things off. Before we get started, we need to address some housekeeping items. First, I'd like to remind everyone that today's session will be recorded. The recording will be provided for playback on Metavolve's website for the next three weeks. Second, we may discuss Metavolve's outlook and future performance which may contain forward-looking information within the meaning of applicable Canadian securities legislation. Forward-looking information will include, but is not limited to, statements with respect to the results of collection sites, COVID-19 testing sites, the pursuit by Metavolve of other opportunities, the company's strategic evolution from a COVID-19 testing company to a health technology and services company, and the merits or potential returns of such strategy. Forward-looking information is subject to known and unknown risks, uncertainties, and other factors that may cause actual results to be materially different from the conclusions, forecasts, or projections expressed or implied by such forward-looking information. Certain material factors and assumptions have been applied in drawing the conclusions or making forecasts or projections reflected in the forward-looking information. A description of the factors that could affect and the assumptions underlying forward-looking information can be found in Metavol's annual information form financial statements and accompanying management discussion and analysis, as well as public disclosure documents that are available for your review under Metavol's profile on CDAR. Participants should not place undue reliance on forward-looking information. Metavol does not undertake to update any forward-looking information except in accordance with applicable securities laws. Now, with those ho housekeeping items out of the way, I'd like to share today's agenda. First, we will hear from David Preiner, Metavolve's newly appointed CEO, who will share a little bit about his background, his view of the opportunities before us, and his vision and plans for the company. Then, we will take questions from participants. Many of you have submitted your questions, and David will get to as many of them as he can in the time that we have. Now, I'll turn the call over to David, who will introduce himself. Great. Thank you so much, Aaron, and uh, thank all of you for participating today. Uh, really excited to have you here. And uh, yeah, as Aaron mentioned, I'm David Preiner uh, and thrilled to be leading Metavolve in, in this transition from uh, securities issuer to you know, COVID-19 testing company to really this full-fledged health tech company uh, that I believe it can be to make an incredible impact uh, on all the patients that we're working with and, and many more to come. Uh, maybe first a little bit about myself. Uh, I have uh, an education and background in molecular biology, biotechnology, nanoengineering, um, and, and I've also bootstrapped three companies from essentially nothing to multi-million dollar uh, success. Um, so, you know, really, I, I think the stem of what, what's always motivated me is an obsession with trying to make an impact in the world. And I think what, what's attracted me uh, to Metavolve, and, and this role in particular, is the unique opportunity that we have to reach you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, potentially millions of patients as we continue this journey to improve human health. Um, and I think it's a pivotal time for this evolution, not only for Metavolve, but for our country. And therefore, it's a great opportunity for all of us to, you know, kind of push forward in this endeavor. Um, you know, over the last uh, essentially nine days uh, that I've been CEO, which is, you know, pretty, you know, just kind of getting in the door here, um, you know, I've really been focused on taking uh, an assessment uh, and accounting of all the Metavol's assets, uh, interviewing, you know, kind of the key players, talking with strategic partners, uh, all the groups that we're working with to really get a full understanding of, you know, the underpinning uh, resources at Metavol's disposal to position the company for, you know, the highest levels of success. Um, what I can tell you is that while there are opportunities uh, or excuse me, areas where we could improve, there are tremendous underlying opportunities with uh, the current assets and resources that we have in play. Uh, and overall, we have a great team to get there. Um, you know, I think, you know, right now our, our country um, it has, isn't just fighting one pandemic. You know, we have obviously COVID-19 in the current emergency uh, and, and obviously that's top of mind, uh, but we can't forget that there are a number of other health issues plaguing our country. Um, and, and many others around the world from, you know, diabetes to ischemic heart disease uh, to addiction. Uh, this is the transition of where we think Metavolve can uh, essentially leverage our current underpinning network uh, to make a long-term sustainable impact. We're going to talk about how we do that. Um, you know, and, and really it starts with the very short-term, uh, you know, objective of becoming cash flow positive. 
Um, so making immediate uh, corrective changes to essentially um, you know, tweak operations. I don't want to say change because it's really actually minor tweaks uh, can have a pretty significant to the bottom line to give the company long-term financial stability uh, and generate positive cash flows. Um, and you know, in doing that, we think we're going to generate tremendous shareholder value. Uh, essentially, um, what we're looking to do is transition from uh, the current state of play with our uh, essentially leveraging our collection sites to really a SaaS business model, uh, focusing on the app that was purchased last week from Myosin. Uh, very excited about that and, and had a role kind of help getting that all together. Um, but basically what, what we see is a, essentially a subscription-based model where users can uh, sign onto our platform and have it become one of the first places they look uh, to improve their health. Um, you know, as uh, we kind of say internally at Metavolve, it's all about, you know, not just telehealth, but really telediagnostics and, and you know, empowering information, or excuse me, empowering uh, patients with information uh, so they can help make meaningful decisions in their lives uh, based on data. And, and I think that's kind of the gap, or one of the gaps that's missing in U.S. healthcare. Um, you know, and really our goal is to, um, you know, kind of take assessment of these assets that we currently have and really put a fine pin uh, on this SaaS business model where all the assets that Metavolve currently has are, are now pointed in this one direction. Uh, and it really falls under two umbrellas. We have the direct uh, to patient umbrella where, um, you know, I would consider that all the physical collection sites and cubes that we have. So it's, you know, an opportunity where Metavolve can interact directly with patients. Uh, then we really have a business to business model uh, where we've actually been approached and, and started conversations with a, a handful of healthcare companies, uh, hospital networks, um, to essentially expand our coverage um, and, and basically become a service provider to the existing infrastructure within the U.S. And from our standpoint, it doesn't really matter if it's Metabol's patient directly or if it's a patient that's coming through one of our you know, B2B relationships that we're in the process of developing. The goal is to essentially onboard everybody to, to a singular platform with a unified vision uh, and a very simple approach where you take, you know, initially your, your baseline of clinical diagnostic information, uh, assess where the patient's at, uh, analyze maybe their pharmaceuticals or, you know, current interventions that are currently being used to, to treat that patient and, you know, running it through big data and different algorithms using AI. And again, this is my vision and, you know, what would I'd like to build with the company? So bear that in mind. But um, where I think the opportunity is, is in repeating that cycle um, and making data-driven decisions that improve healthcare. Um, and I think we've made tremendous, uh, you know, steps in that direction in the last week. Uh, so very excited to, to, you know, get us there. And uh, the great thing about that is as we transition from being a service provider to this health tech company, uh, the first thing that we'll see happen is a transition to, again, essentially a cash flow positive business model because we're increasing the amount of tests offered uh, per patient um, and expanding kind of the services that we're offering. So we're, we're very excited to see what that transition could look like. Um, you know, as of now, um, you know, kind of the current business model relies on primarily COVID-19. So the three types of tests that we offer, as you all know, uh, real-time PCR tests, uh, rapid antigen and rapid antibody IgG and IgM. Um, the average revenue that we're obtaining per patient, uh, per encounter, is right around $30, uh, give or take. Um, some of the initial changes that we're making to expand this offering, uh, we could see those numbers rise uh, exponentially. Um, early on, we could see, you know, kind of short-term rises in the next, you know, three months uh, to maybe the $70 to $100 per encounter range. Um, and I could see that growing over the next six to 12 months uh, to the three to $500 range per encounter uh, if things go well. Um, obviously, all of these are going to be based on patient need and up to the prescribing physician. But these are initial forecasts of, of where we think the direction could go over the next uh, you know, six to uh, 18 months, uh, just to kind of give a broad range there. Uh, so you know, very excited about that. Um, you know, and I think the goal here you know, once we get to that point and once each stage is, uh, each site is, is highly profitable, uh, you know, shifting gears back to essentially the, the Starbucks business model where, uh, you know, they focused on reaching or at a point in Starbucks history, they focused on reaching a critical mass 
um, where, you know, essentially everywhere you go, there's a Starbucks. Um, my vision for Medevolve would include everywhere you go, there's a Medevolve. Um, make it very easy and for patients to access the, the care and information that they need. Um, and then obviously triage to the larger existing hospital networks when needed. Uh, but to be that first point of care option for patients, make it so convenient you can't pass it up. And, you know, for myself as a patient, something that I would want to use, you know, all the time to monitor my own health. Um, that's the vision that I think, you know, Medevolve can, can become and what we can grow into together as a team. Um, so very excited there. Um, and I think, you know, what we've done, what we've done also on the, the B2B side um, is establish some really good relationships um, with, you know, health tech partners, um, including companies like Marvel Diagnostics and their Blowfish model, uh, including, you know, Aditex Therapeutics um, and others that have really cool offerings that strengthen uh, essentially the B2B business model. Um, and, you know, kind of what we're doing there is essentially taking stock of these partnerships and seeing how we can work them into existing relationships for things like distribution, uh, for things like improving access uh, of care, improving the quality of care. Um, and then again, the underpinning strategy to this business model isn't just to you know, widen our, our, our depth of customers or diversify the business. It, it's really to capture more people and bring them in on the journey of building this health tech uh, initiative. And, uh, launching as many people to, to these beta tests that we'll, we'll be doing over the next year um, to, to you know, onboard our platform and see how this goes. But we're very excited about bringing the offering together and uh, working with the existing partnerships that Metavolve has established uh, to bring this vision to life. Great. Aaron, Thank any, you, David. any questions or, yeah. Thank you, David. It was great to hear from you. Now we will begin the question and answer portion of the call. So we have a few uh, that have been sent to us and uh, I'll read them out. So number one, Metabol's primary business is in the US. So why not list on a larger US exchange? Do you have any plans to do so? That's a great question, Aaron. So what I can tell you is that um, we would love to list on larger uh, US exchange. Um, I've already started reviewing uh, kind of the, the rules and guidelines and requirements to uplist onto NASDAQ. Um, so I think, you know, we're, we're going to need to see how things come together over again the next six to 12 months to see how fast we can make something come to fruition. Uh, I can't make any commitments at this time as to how fast uh, that uplisting could happen, but I think the goal is to uh, certainly be on a, a top tier U.S. exchange, whether that would be NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange. Again, the preference may be being NASDAQ at this time, just because of the, the, the tech emphasis that's in the marketplace. Um, so that's something we would love to, to do and pursue in the future. Absolutely. Great. Will the vision of Metavolve change now that uh, there is a new CEO? Yeah, absolutely. I think the vision is, is certainly going to change. Um, and I know it's, it's been a you know, very fast paced industry, but the, the way I look at it, it's very simple. Um, you know, if we look at the initial business model of Metavolve when it was QuestCap, we were an investment issuer. So the entire value of the company is, you know, essentially the value of the investments that we make um, and what the portfolio is. Uh, if we're a clinical diagnostics company and you look at uh, the value of what that generates for shareholders, uh, typically you're going to see PE ratios uh, on the cheap side of, of you know, two to one, uh, you know, maybe as high as five or six to one, um, where it, in terms of the transition to becoming a health tech company, and, and quite frankly, I think that's what's exciting and what, what attracted me to this project. Um, maybe a side note, I've, I've worked in, in building similar technologies in the past on a very uh, small scale, but uh, essentially won accolades at Harvard, Stanford, and Yale at various hackathons. Uh, again, taking a small team of engineers hammering something out over a very short period of time and getting an underpinning prototype that people were really excited about. And I think where that expertise now comes to life with Metavolve is that a transition to a, uh, you know, uh, essentially this app focused AI, deep data driven, you know, health technology company, uh, it, it really well positions us to be a player in that market uh, and prototype things quickly, beta test them quickly and bring products to market quickly. Um, and the great news there is that every dollar we earn now puts us in a, in a tech PE ratio category for our comparables, many of which are 20 to 1, 30 to 1, 
uh, you know, again, exponentially better for shareholders and all stakeholders of Metavol. Uh, and we couldn't be more excited to deliver that value, not only to shareholders, but quite honestly, at the end of the day, patients. <laughs> you know, we want to see how impactful we can become uh, in, in terms of improving human health. And the plan right now is going to be to build the underpinning systems. Um, again, once we're cash flow positive and, and the initial uh, you know, stabilization of the company has occurred. The, the focus will be on developing this app further, uh, building out AI and, and building out, you know, kind of deep learning, you know, algorithms, machine learning platforms, um, and basically taking the, the focus of the company to being a data-driven healthcare initiative. Um, and we think once we do that, uh, very quickly, we could see, you know, really exciting things happen from a, a, a patient standpoint, uh, but it's going to start with getting a you know, essentially baseline of the data, uh, which is very similar to a rubric that I, I witnessed when I was at uh, Boston Children's Hospital. Obviously, I wasn't a physician. I was just a tech, uh, but I had a great experience there, and um, I was in the neurology department. One of the things, uh, one of the types of patients we would see a lot of are uh, children with refractory epilepsy, so essentially in a type of epilepsy that can't be treated with any medication that was previously tried. Um, essentially, seizures will, will keep coming back. And you know, the, the way the physicians would approach the, the challenge, and it, it was amazing being around people who were so smart and I felt very privileged, um, but it was very straightforward. You know, they would come in, in, in most cases, try to wean the patient off of as many medications as possible, uh, you know, safely and under supervision, uh, establish a clinical baseline that was using uh, you know, EEG technology. Uh, and then they would try out a, a medicine that either hadn't been tried before, maybe a different dosage, uh, go up, go down, whatever the case would be, switch from brand name to generic, generic to brand name, these slight modifications, and try that for, you know, maybe a month, maybe three months, depending on the patient. Uh, and, and then they would do another EEG. So again, you obtain, you know, real data up front, you try something that makes a meaningful clinical change in that patient's life, and then you obtain more data. And it's only based on that data, you make the decision, did this work? Was that a good medication? Was it a bad medication? Did that help the patient, yes or no? Um, and, and in repeating that process, uh, it was amazing to witness, um, you know, many patients have, have great results. And I think that's the, the thesis of Medevolve. If we were to take that, you know, outside of a very focused and specific area of medicine, but to a much broader, you know, what, what are our cholesterol levels? Um, you know, what do the blood sugar levels look like, et cetera. And, you know, maybe we can come up with biomarkers that, you know, hey, this is our top list of, you know, 50, 100, 200 biomarkers that we can establish and monitor on a regular basis. And again, making those interventions using uh, the, the diagnostic baseline and the repeat diagnostics with pharmaceutical recommendations in the middle. Um, and again, just so happens Metavol purchased a pharmacy. Um, so we've got a pharmacy in, in Nevada. And I think that's an area also of high growth that we'll see under, you know, the vision that I bring to the table is really that hybrid between partnering with, you know, top tier clinical diagnostic uh, CLIA labs, uh, and then pharmacies, uh, you know, partnerships are in house, and then closing the loop in healthcare to really provide outstanding patient care. And um, I don't want to say it's an experiment, but I think there's a, a, a statistical likelihood that we'll see opportunities to improve human health. And, you know, the, the stage we're at right now is kind of that early planning and early design stage. Uh, we're going to be hiring developers soon and um, engineers and, you know, consulting with various physicians and, you know, again, having lots of fun, quite, to be quite honest with you. Um, and, and then once we establish the, the, the baseline and start generating data, then the, the process is very simple. We let the data tell us, did we do something good? Did we not? Do we need to make a change? Should we improve something? Where are the opportunities? And ultimately, it's going to be all about patient health. And we can leave all the boring stuff like financials off the table and focus on the underpinning mission of improving human health. Um, and I think that's what I'm excited about. And that's the energy, the attitude, the spirit. Um, I think it'll be highly profitable. I just think we'll kind of have so much money, we don't need to worry about it. And we can focus uh, very, very you know, acutely on how do we really make changes in people's lives that matter? And can we get good at it? And, and right now, that's still a question. We don't know. Um, my hope is we get very, very good at it. And I think where Metavolve is really well positioned to, to be a leader in this space 
um, despite you know many giants of, of industry, you know IBM, Microsoft, and others that have, have you know looked at how to integrate AI with healthcare. What makes Metavolve so well positioned is the the fact that we have direct patient access through you know the existing collection sites, the you know secondary access through you know potential uh, you know hospital partnerships or connections that are you know kind of happening in the back of the scenes that. Um, you know, we hope to secure, we don't have them yet, but we hope to establish. Um, and, and again, taking that front end from a clinical diagnostic standpoint, grabbing the data, um, making a clinical recommendation through our AI platform and uh, a network of physicians, which we'll have to secure or in the process of, of talking to groups. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it'll be up to individual physicians to decide, yes, I like what the AI says. No, I don't. I'm going to make the prescription. Um, you know, but our thought, our thesis is that it'll be something that will be meaningful. Uh, and the goal is to generate data and see uh, how it impacts human health. And, and, you know, our hope is that we see great data. Um, you know, so right now what you're going to see here is the, again, the immediate cash flow uh, opportunity to, to become cash flow positive. You'll see us start developing the, the app and more announcements around that. You'll see announcements around expanding our uh, clinical diagnostic offerings through various partnerships. Uh, and you will see um, an expansion of our pharma network. Um, and you know, by combining those all together, we hope to generate some really cool data that you'll hear about, but probably not until after it's published, hopefully in a couple of scientific journals. And um, you know, again, it all depends on the data. We'll see if it looks great, we'll get it published. If it doesn't, well, so much for publishing, right? We'll find out. But uh, at this time, I'm very, very excited about what Metavolve's future holds and, and what we can do together. Thanks, David. Uh, here's a question that's come in that I know a lot of shareholders are concerned with. It's about uh, the, sh the stock short volume. It's very high these days. Do you have any plans to address the stock shorting that's taking place? Yeah, you know, that's a great question, Aaron. I think the, the reason why people are shorting the stock is because they're basing their assumptions on the old story. <laughs> you know, if you're, if you're looking at it as an investment issuer, um, yes, we could have some, some tremendous success with, you know, initiatives like our, our partnership with Myerbal Diagnostics and some of the others. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, uh, a, a short seller is always going to say, okay, is there a statistical chance that the, the stock could go down? And, you know, while that's always going to exist, um, I'm very, very bullish that Metavolve is well positioned uh, for exponential growth based on, uh, again, hitting these benchmarks, becoming cash flow positive means we're not going to be reliant on uh, additional funds. So, uh, you know, that can shrink what's available on the market. So again, supply and demand. Uh, the transition from being a uh, collection company with, again, you know, relatively low PE ratios, if you look at the market, to a health tech company, really a SaaS, uh, you know, software company, which, which typically have very high PE ratios. Um, and I think that creates a perfect storm um, for us to do very well. And, you know, at the end of the day, the short sellers are going to be the ones that are exposed to the greatest level of risk because uh, if you short a stock, there's, <laughs> you know, and it skyrockets, then, then you're stuck. So, um, you know, I, I don't think it's going to be a major concern. And I think we'll, we'll kind of punch through that veil uh, relatively quickly as we start hitting these benchmarks and generating, uh, you know, great results, which I, I think we have a great team to do that. So uh, I'm not worried at all. I, I think it's just going to be a minor bump in the road. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's, uh, we have three minutes left. Uh, so we have time for one last question. I have here, uh, if I was a new investor and, and looked at the website for the first time, uh, I would assume the company is mainly a COVID testing site, but we all know that it's much more than that. Will the website be updated more frequently to reflect the vision of the company? Absolutely. And I think, you know, maybe backing up the, the, the current website, uh, was, you know, we're undergoing kind of a rebranding uh, in terms of the Metavolve logo, the look, the feel, um, you know, what's been out there updated so far is was really an, an initial uh, push to just kind of get the, the new look and feel out there for, for the company. Um, and I think where the goal with this is in, instead of having, you know, several different brands all operating under the Metavolve umbrella, the goal is going to be to align all of these to essentially have the Metavolve brand underneath them. Um, so in terms of the collection sites, in terms of the pharmacy. Um, so we're working on a strategic marketing campaign that will really align and focus those interests. Um, so it becomes very clear from a, a, a patient standpoint that it's one seamless company. Um, the other thing that I think you'll see is that 
as we transition from, uh, again, being an investment issuer, COVID-19 testing company to now, you know, a, a you know, full stack health tech company, um, the, the benefit that we're going to see is, you know, really, it's all going to become about how many users we have, how many patients do we have, how many people are in our system. So, you know, I would love it if we go to our website and the only thing you think is, gosh, I want to sign up, click here. <laughs> that's, that's the goal. And, you know, we'll be working on different beta testing, uh, showing printouts or, or demos to users uh, to, to try to gain feedback and make sure we have the uh, best possible ways that, you know, make it easy for people to sign up, get involved, get engaged with our platform, uh, and really start that relationship with patients that, you know, we hope will last for a long time. Thank you, David, and thank you all for participating today. That concludes the Q&A portion of our call, and we look forward to our next seminar, webinar. <laughs> Great. Thanks, everyone. I really appreciate it.